Hello all, welcome back to another interesting story uh, under the Ajadi Kambal Mahasav story series by Momish to Amazings. Today I'm going to talk about another interesting uh, story about a king who has actually sought, uh, waited and sought the revenge for uh, uh, on the same people who had destroyed the knowledge centers of India. You all know who destroyed our knowledge centers, right? Uh, they are Nalanda and Takshila and all the other ancient in, uh, universities, isn't it? But do you know the king who has waited uh, patiently and sought the uh, revenge on destroying uh, uh, the ancient universities? So uh, he is none other than Maharaja Prithure from uh, the current Assam or the Kamarupa kingdom. Kamarupa kingdom is, uh, is uh, nothing but the present Assam. And though these people doesn't feel like uh, calling their kingdom as, as by the name Kamarupa, they prefer saying that they belong, uh, their uh, city belongs to the Prague Jyotish Pura kingdom, which is the actual kingdom of Narakasura that has been uh, from the ancient uh, Indian mythology. You remember the Narakasura and Diwali story? The, the very same Narakasura used to rule Assam at one point of time. And all the kings um, from Assam think that they are the uh, actual descendants of the uh, King Narakasura. And that is why they prefer calling their kingdom as Prague Jyotishapuram. Uh, and some people, some historians prefer calling it as Kamarupapuram on the uh, name of the god Kama, or uh, you know all that story, right? Ram Prati and Ka Kama. So from that name, it has generated. Uh, let, before we talk about the Shema dynasty and Maharaja Prithu, let us first go ahead and talk about uh, uh, other uh, uh, things that have happened at some other point, uh, at some other point in Indian in Indian subcontinent, which have triggered uh, Maharaja Prithu to take these actions. What are those incidents? We, we all know that once upon a time, Bihar is not known for anarchy or not known for not known as illiterate uh, state in India, right? It was at its peak and it is the most uh, important educational hub in ancient India, where all the um, universities like uh, Nalanda University, uh, Vikram Mishila University, Ubuntu University, so many Vishwavidyalayas were there, which are which in the present day can be compared to the Ivy League uh, in, in, uh, institutions across the world. And to attend to these institutions, people have to struggle a lot. They need to uh, write the entrance examinations. They need to, after even writing the entrance exam, after getting qualified, I mean, they have to serve the, the gurus there to get qualified to learn the stuff. And we all know about uh, the glory of Narada University, isn't it? It has uh, like almost like 90 lakh books stored in a three-story library building, which which has been burned by our uh, Bhakti Arkilji. And the entire um, Nalanda University uh, has so many departments of study, so many specializations are being taught there that uh, we cannot even imagine in these days. They had taught uh, plastic surgery, they had taught medicine, uh, pharmacy, astrology, then uh, uh, the different uh, uh, sectors of uh, Buddhism, Mahayana, Hinayana, then philosophy, then you name the discipline it was being taught at that point of time, including uh, the most uh, famous mathematics, Vedic mathematics, astrology, even the people say that they had also started building robotics there. Uh, because now, unfortunately, we don't have any basically proof to say all these things because the proofs that were existing in Nalanda at that point of time were destroyed by Nalanda and Muhammad bin Bhaktiyar Kilji. And now, you, you all know that Kilji has destroyed uh, and the Nalanda University and all the other universities. But do you know that there is a specific reason why he has destroyed all these things? So for that, we need to know the origins of uh, Muhammad uh, Bhaktiyar Kilji. Bhaktiyar Kilji is basically from Afghanistan. And he, like any other typical Kilji tribal chiefs, wanted to come down and settle down in India so that he can... He can also get some loot out of India and he can uh, his life will be well settled. It's like, you know, how we Indians right now are thinking that migrating to abroad will, will make our lives more peaceful, uh, peaceful and we can save more money, we can be economically move forward in the social sectors and all that stuff. At that point of time, Afghanistanis were thinking that by coming to India and attacking on the Indian kings, they can make more money and that way, 
and their families back in Afghanistan can pro live happily and prosper. And that is the reason why Bakhtiyar Kilji has come down to India. But he has been uh, I mean, uh, rejected by Mohammad Ghori in, from the Delhi Sultanate. Reason being, he's a very cynic person and he's, uh, he's not a very good fit for army. He's a very uh, he's a person of very short stature. His eyesight is not good. And he's a very cynic, very sad, sick mentality person. So nobody has actually recruited him into the army. That gave um, uh, Bakhtiyar Kilji another reason to start hating Indians and hating Bharat at that point of time. So he started moving from one kingdom to another kingdom, right? From Delhi, he started moving to Awadh, and then to Bihar and all the areas. In one of the uh, small uh, kingdoms in Awadh, another tribal chief who had moved from all the way from Afghanistan and established his rule has given uh, Muhammad uh, Bakhtiyar Kilji a shelter. Using that as the base, Muhammad uh, Bakhtiyar Kilji started trying to wage wars and win some territory so that he can establish himself as a king. And that is the time when he had fallen sick all of a sudden with unknown disease. Nobody could cure him. None of the Hakims, none of the mullahs from their community couldn't cure him. And they all said, like, let us go to the in ancient Hindu doctors who can cure you. But Kilji, being a religious fanatic, he didn't want any um, I mean, uh, non-Muslim doctors to attend to him. But they all said, no, 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 Acharya Rahul Sridhar or Sri Darba, the historians uh, are kind of confused on the name of the original person who has come and treated Kilji. They told that he'll come and see you and then treat you in the Islamic method. Archa, then Raja Rahul Sridhar uh, had come down to visit uh, Muhammad uh, Bakhtiyar Kilji and then from Nal all the way from Nalanda and he could identify what his disease is and he gave him a medicine. And you know what the medicine is? He asked, uh, because he knows that uh, Bakhtiyar Kilji is a Islam fanatic and he doesn't tolerate any of the Hindu medicines or Hindu rituals or Hindu, Hindu practices, he asked Bakhtiyar Kilji to read Quran daily, the Quran which has been given by Acharya Rahul Sridhar himself so that his disease uh, for 21 days, so that his disease can be cured. And uh, you know what? Acharya Rahul Sridhar, Ashridhar Ba, uh, has actually very cleverly applied the Ayurvedic portions on the pages of the uh, Quran. And Bakhtiyar Kilji has this habit of uh, licking uh, his finger and turning each and every page. With that way, the Ayurvedic portions have gone into his blood and he got cured within 21 days. So when and then he, he called her. Uh, Acharya Rahul Sridhar, after he got cured, Kilji, and started teasing him and ill-treating him, saying, your ancient Hindu medicine is of no use. It's only me um, me and my Quran has cured me. So you see, this is all based of knowledge, blah, 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 blah. And then Acharya Rahul Sridhar couldn't take it up. And he said that I had applied Ayurvedic portions on the pages of the Quran book. And that is how you got cured. The moment <coughs> he told that to Kilji, Kilji got really angry. I already told you he's a sadistic person. He cannot just digest anything positive about Hinduism or Hindu rituals or practices. So he sent away Raja Rahul Sridhar without giving him any penny or any encouragement or any thank you. He sent away uh, this uh, Acharya to Nalanda. Then he inquired who this Acharya Rahul Sridhar is all about. When uh, people told him that he is the head of the Ayurveda department from the Nalanda University, he decided that he should destroy Nalanda University once for all so that this knowledge cannot be passed on to another generation. What a fanatic thought you should say, isn't it? The person is getting help from um, a new faith, but he's not able to accept that fact. <coughs> and he's going to kill that person who has helped him. You call this a selfish or perverted thought, whatever you want, you can name it. So he took his army, attacked Nalanda. At that time, there were around 10 to 15,000 people who were studying in Nalanda, along with the, all the Acharyas, all the gurus who are there. <coughs> so Kilji not only destroyed the buildings of Nalanda University, he burned the Nalanda library, which houses 90,000 books, which is such a huge number. In fact, the smoke um, uh, used to be seen even after six months in uh, Bihar. Then you can imagine how much fire it 
uh, taken to for all those books to get burned. Imagine the time and effort each and every person has spent in preparing those books. We lost the treasure forever, forever. Not only that, he didn't stop there. He did. He killed all the students using his sword. He put some of the gurus into one room and burned that room entirely. He never spared anybody. The amount of blood he had made to flow on the floors of Nalanda is just unimaginable. After all this destruction, then Muhammad Gorish and other people started realizing that Yes, Bakhtiyar Kilji can also be a good army man, chieftain. But whose blood did he flow? It's about all the scholars, the Vedic scholars, the uh, different sciences, uh, scholars from different uh, science disciplines, whose knowledge is very much essential and whose knowledge has put India on the pedestal of the earth, saying India is the epitome of knowledge. We lost all that because of one perverted person who thought that this knowledge is nothing. It's only his Quran he has, which can cure him, not this knowledge. But in fact, he got cured because of that Ayurvedic knowledge. After seeing the destruction, the uh, way the blood was flowing, the way the people were shouting for mercy, all that looked like like uh, music and dance for his uh, ears. He was very much satisfied, Muhammad Bakhtiyar Kilji. So he then went on to destroy the next university, Vikramshila, Udantapuri, which are very, very much near to the current Nalanda uh, state place. And he started destroying one university. Brother. The news started spreading all over India that this fanatic person has come and is He's on a path to destroy all the knowledge centers within India. This news has reached even the Kamarupa kingdom or the Pragyati Shebra kingdom. And in, by that time, Maharaja Prithu from Shema dynasty is ruling Kamarupa kingdom. And the moment he heard that, he said there might be chances that this fanatic, Islam fanatic, can come and attack Kamarupa kingdom as well. And it so happened that after all these destructions, Bhaktiyar Kilji went to Bengal and at that point of time, Maharaj Lakshman Sen is ruling Bengal, the current Bengal area. And he gave up the throne on a platter to Kilji without offering any fight. That actually increased his confidence, multiplied his confidence and which gave him Bhaktiya Kiji, the wildest dream that yes, he can go cross Kamarupa, reach Tibet, conquer the Silk Road. Once he conquers the Silk Road, he'll become the emperor of the world. With this wild dream, he started moving towards Kamarupa. And at that time, the his army numbers have also doubled up because the army people from Bengal has also were forced to join into his army, and they were made to con get converted into Islam, religion. So the moment this news also reached uh, Maharaja Prithu, he started preparing in his army and his common people, everybody in his kingdom, about the forthcoming war. Uh, and the, there is only one link on the Vegavati River from the main Bengal to Kamarupa kingdom, and that link is this uh, is the small bridge, I mean, the, which was built with a rock, the ancient bridge, which one has to cross, and only then they can enter. Before Mahat Bhakti Kilji could start, come near to this bridge, Maharaja Prithu has had a series of meetings with the, the tribals, with the common people in Kamarupa Kingdom, along with the army people. He told, he gave them some tips. After, uh, and his people have followed those tips to the word. And the moment Kilji came, there was no opposition on the bridge, before the bridge or after the bridge. Kilji felt that, yes, he can now well capture Kamarupa in the same way he has captured Bengal. Already his people are getting tired walking so long from Bihar to Bengal and then Bengal all the way to Kamarupa Kingdom. They crossed the bridge. They started going into the villages. 
surprisingly, the villages were all deserted. There was nobody to offer them food or welcoming drink or whatever it is. Even there was no place where they can fetch water or food. The the army people were coming um, along with Bakhtiyar Kilji went into those houses to take some earthen pots so that they can dip these things, dip these pots into the uh, nearby lakes and uh, rivers and drink water. As soon as they started drinking the water, they were falling down, they're getting high fever and they're dying. You know the reason? They were all, all these earthen pots were coated with the Ayurvedic herbal paste, which is nothing but poison. The moment it mixes into water, it will turn into poison and will kill the people instantly. And very few provisions were seen in the villages. And those provisions they tried to cook and the uh, using the age old medium method of uh, putting rocks together and making the fire and doing it. The moment fire came and when these people put those provisions on top of the fire, they were all blasting here on top of their faces and some people were getting tired. Seeing all this, the Kilji soldiers' morale was going down day by day, day by day. By the time they could reach almost like to uh, to not to the, um, the main capital city towards halfway through that Bhakti Arkilji was attacked by Maharaja Prithu and his army soldiers. But remember Bhakti Arkilji's army is all has already weakened. They are tired physically and morally as well. And it was the easy cakewalk for Maharaja Prithu and his army people to slay them. So out of the 30,000 people with whom Maharaj uh, Bhakti Atkinji has started to wage a war on Farmer of Pakistan, hardly 300 people were left by within a couple of hours after the war has started. Kilji has lost his mental balance. He didn't know what to do. He said, let us run back to Bengal, take shelter in Bengal for some time, and then come back and attack. So all the 300 odd people, along with Kilji, ran towards the bridge. By the time they could go to the bridge, you are seeing it, right? It's all reimagined, reconstructed because I'm showing it to you, my dear friends, which are available in Google. The bridge was broken. They have the Begavati River, which is a tributary to Brahmaputra River in Assam. And you know how fast Brahmaputra River flows in the same way, all tributaries flow at a very fast rate. Crossing that river is like a suicidal act. But there is no other escape. Either Kilji has to get has to be has to get died in the hands of Maharaja Prithu, or he needs to jump into the river and if God wishes he can cross the river. So thinking of that, praying to their Allah, few people along with Kilji had jumped into the river. The remaining 300 uh, or I mean people who were standing on the banks of the uh, Vegavati River were captured by Maharaja Prithu and his soldiers as prisoners. Out of the hundred or people who had jumped into the river, only ten could be saved. The rest are all got washed away down shores because of the speed of the river. And these ten soldiers actually tried their level best put their lives on the leash first to, in order to save Kilji's, Kilji's life. Kilji has ran from there to his nephew's place in Bengal, asking for shelter. They were all, they were really torn, both they were exhausted with physically, mentally, emotionally, you name it, you can see it in their faces. When these people entered Kilji's nephew's house, nephew asked for our time. When nephew said, I mean, when Kilji's uh, soldiers narrated the story that this has happened and they were defeated so badly I mean, in the hands of Maharaja Prithu, the king from Kamarupa kingdom, his nephew couldn't take it up. He has taken a sword and cut Kilji's head immediately. And uh, along with that, he cut all the remaining soldiers' heads too because he didn't want this 
it's to spread out to other community indian hindu communities otherwise they all can also start waging wars like maharaja prithu and then the, all these people have to return back, uh, back to uh, afghanistan which is true the news can spread immediately but the reason persian writer who was documenting khilji and other afghanistan rulers time in india he is none other than minhaj al siraj zani who has documented maharaja prithu how he uh, by fought against bakhtiyar khilji how he has defeated khilji and what a shameful face khilji had everything was documented in detail in persian in the book called tabakate nasain nasiri which was translated once again back to english by so many people and recently one assamese historian rakim patar has written a book on maharaja prithu apart from these two books we don't have any anecdotes or any mention of maharaja prithu in our indian history books we only read about maharaja prithu in one line saying mahmud bakhtiyar khilji has been defeated in the kamarupa kingdom by a person called maharaja prithu who is this maharaja prithu from where he came or where he went after this battle nobody knows that is the sad state of our indian history my dear friends indian I mean the way our indian historians have documented our indian history but you know we are so really good the person who has destroyed our knowledge centers we have a city named after that person bakhtiyar pur in bihar we also have a station major junction and if we want to go and visit nalanda from any where in india we need to pass this bakhtiyar pur so is that does it mean that we are paying tribute to bakhtiyar khilji for destroying our nalanda university i don't know i'm speechless when i heard this i checked the indian railways map yes bakhtiyar pur junction is very much there very close to nalanda and if we have to reach nalanda we have to pass this junction so that means they all knew that how bad our uh, this thing is thinking is that every time we pass through bakhtiyar pur we'll remember about mad bakhtiyar khilji the religious fanatic pervert who has destroyed indian knowledge centers but the person who has taken avenge on khilji's presence has been eliminated completely from indian history books that's all is the story my dear friends for today i hope it will raise some questions in your mind if yes please do let me know with in the form of comments we all can make a petition to our indian government which is doing wonderful job during this ajadi kaapur mahotsav celebrations i hope at least now we have some form of memo uh, memorial um, a momentum and uh, memorials installed on the name of the maharaja prithu right bye bye let's meet tomorrow with another interesting story bye bye